It feels like we just got done having our minds blown by ChatGPT 3 released on November 30th of last year. That was just three and a half months ago. And already OpenAI has announced GPT-4. So I'm gonna be breaking down that announcement with you today. OpenAI just dropped a brand new product page for GPT-4, a very long research description, and a 90 page research paper, which I'm not going to read and just rely on much smarter people to summarize for me. Thank you very much. The announcement came via a tweet from OpenAI, linked to the page and a developer live stream coming in just a few hours. So let's start with the product page, which by the way, this is available on ChatGPT Plus today. OpenAI says GPT-4 can solve difficult problems with greater accuracy. So this is, this is one of the big problems with GPT-3 is it would be wrong very confidently. So this is apparently a big leap for GPT. They give us some examples here of creativity, visual input, and longer context. For, for creativity, they asked it to explain the plot of Cinderella from A to Z. So you can see A, B, C, D, pretty creative, pretty cool. Um, but the really amazing thing is visual input. So finally, chat GPT is no longer just a text-based program. In the example they give, they show a picture of some eggs, some flour, some milk, whatever that is. and Ask it, what can I make with these ingredients? ChatGPT responds with options. So it's able to read the picture, understand the question, and then come up with answers. This is absolutely massive. We're gonna see a little bit lower how some of this functionality is already being used by companies today. GPT-4 is also able to take live web pages as input. So in this example, they're taking a Wikipedia page and asking it to describe Rihanna's Super Bowl performance, and it's able to do that. This is a little bit like what Bing AI is already able to do in searching the live web. Um, and I'm sure there's gonna be people in the coming hours and days really stretching this to this limits and seeing what it's capable of. So subscribe below, I'm gonna be covering this a lot. They also describe GPT-4's advanced reasoning capabilities. So it's better at like analytical reasoning and I would assume math, possibly programming as well. In the example they give, they give you know three people with availability certain times throughout the day. ChatGPT confidently gives them the wrong answer, uh, but GPT-4 is able to take that same prompt and give a right answer it seems like just in the last month, people really started to understand that ChatGPT was very confident in his answers, but was not necessarily correct. And they were, you know, that's obviously a, a problem. Um, so to see this is very good news. Using that better advanced reasoning, GPT-4 outperforms ChatGPT on standardized tests. So they show in the uniform bar exam, it placed in the 10th percentile. That's the not good percentile. With GPT-4, it's in the 90th. Same with the Biology Olympiad from 31st to 99th. And what I believe this with vision means is that they gave it prompts which included images which allowed it to get a much higher score. They also describe how they made GPT-4 safer, unlikely to respond to requests for disallowed content, Dan type things, if you know what I mean and 40% more likely to produce factual responses. So I'm curious to see, 40% doesn't sound that high to me. Um, so I'm curious to try this out and see if it like feels like it's actually giving more factual responses. I'm sure they break down exactly how they came to these conclusions in this paper, but uh, yeah, I'm not reading that. More on safety and alignment. Essentially, we all have been training GPT-4 to be uh, safer and more accurate. And then this is interesting. They go on to highlight some of the ways that GPT-4 is being used in different companies' products today. Duolingo is using it to give you personalized feedback on like a role play type of conversation that you can have with the AI. So when you make a mistake in that conversation, instead of just like a right or wrong that a lot of language apps have today, it can actually explain to you what you said wrong and, and why. Um, this sounds incredibly useful. Be My Eyes is an existing app for the blind and low vision community. Presumably it will let the app understand more of the world that it's seeing. Basically you hold your smartphone up, scan something, and then GPT-4 is able to contextualize that information, understand it, and then help uh, the user navigate the world. There's four more examples here from Stripe, Morgan Stanley, Khan Academy, and the government of Iceland apparently. 
I will save these, move on, and um, I might even just make an entire video on these because they're all very interesting. They also give you links to the full research paper, some of the limitations, um, how, the, how infrastructure, how it's hosted, and the availability. So again, this is available today uh, for users that have ChatGPT+. Next up is the research paper, which I'm not going to go through all of it. Let's just jump to the most important parts. They point out that in casual conversation, the distinction between GPT 3.5 and 4 is subtle, and the differences really come out with complex tasks. So this is going to take a little bit of time for people to figure out what are the types of prompts, what are the types of questions we can ask in GPT-4 that we weren't getting good responses in in GPT-3. They benchmarked this in a few different ways. Hard to benchmark creativity, but you'll see below uh, how they're, they're sort of getting to that. These are exam results with GPT-3.5 in blue and GPT-4 in green. So you can see it surpasses, um, it, these are AP exams, SAT exams, it surpasses GPT 3.5 in almost all of those. Here's some more percentiles for comparing the different versions. Interestingly, GPT 4, you know, with vision is uh, quite superior to GPT 3 in a number of categories. The GRE, it scores in the 80th percentile versus 62, compared to just the 25th percentile from the previous version. So big advancements here, more exams. They did a lot of testing on this, clearly. This one is interesting to me. Leet Code is like a coding platform that has like kind of challenge coding uh, questions or assignments. And it went from 12 or eight out of 10 to 31 and 21 out of 10. So I'm not a coder, but possibly this will have huge implications for coders as well. They compare their results to other large language models um, and theirs are obviously better. They also translated many of these benchmarks into other languages other than English and in 24 of the 26 languages they tested, GPT-4 outperformed the English language performance of GPT-3. So I'm not sure why that is. Um, I'll look into this more, that, but that's an interesting result. They talk about the visual inputs um, and how they're able to work together, taking a text input and a visual input. Um, and then they mention here at the bottom, image inputs are still a research pe preview and not publicly available. So you and I can't quite use this yet, but if things keep moving as fast as they have been, uh, we should have that in no time. There's probably quite a few safety concerns that they want to get over, especially when you bring um, images into this. You can imagine why. They do show some examples here. This one I think is very interesting because it's basically asking the G GPT-4 to describe why a joke is funny. Um, that humor is something that is very human. We don't know of really animals that exhibit humor and certainly no uh, AIs are really able to understand humor. They may be able to mimic it from previous like jokes and things they've heard, but this is a very abstract and humorous image and it's able to describe why it's humorous. This is a VGA cable that, or it looks like a VGA cable you know what? I'm not going to describe it. I'll let ChatGPT do it. You can pause if you want. It can read charts and give you some of the reasoning for uh, its conclusions. So it's asking something about the chart and then provide a step-by-step -step reasoning, which it does here. Answer complex math questions, which was a big limitation it used to have. I don't understand any of this. It's not in English. Um, and even if it was, I wouldn't understand it, but I'll assume this is impressive. It can describe what's unusual about this image. Uh, yeah, it's a man ironing a shirt on a taxi cab. It's able to read the instructed GPT paper and then summarize it. So it wasn't even given this as a text input. It was given these three image inputs. That's my understanding anyway. And then it's able to summarize it. You can ask more questions and it will uh, keep going and explaining the paper to you. Again, describing a meme. I mean, whose who's parents or grandparents aren't going to use this? Everyone, ev they're going to need this. Judge GPT. Would you please describe this meme? And another explanation of humor. Boy, some of those people at OpenAI just really don't get jokes, do they? They also talk about steerability, which is the ability to like steer ChatGPT to answer in a way that you're expecting. So as an example, if you're trying to get it to write a poem, it writes a poem. If you're trying to get it to write like, you know, 
Kurt Vonnegut. It will write like Kurt Vonnegut. This obviously comes with a lot of those same types of safety concerns, so they're addressing those things. They point out jailbreaking of the current model, so this, this kind of fits into that. We'll see people are going to keep coming up with workarounds. We'll see what, what uh, happens with that. They show a few examples of this steerability, so this Socratic tutor. Basically, they're asking it a question but saying, use the Socratic method to don't just answer my question but guide me towards uh, the actual right answer here. You can read the full transcript here, but it's pretty interesting. They talk about some of the limitations and the fact that all of these models hallucinate facts. They believe things and confidently say things that aren't true. And they show some evaluations comparing the different versions of chat GPT-4. As you can expect, GPT-4 uh, is you know, exceeding all of them. And it's really not a small jump. This is a big jump. You can see the different iterations. We're kind of getting smaller jumps here. And then this big jump for GPT-4. It talks a little bit more about its limitations. And once again, the data cuts off uh, at September, 2021. So it doesn't know anything past that point. Supposedly, that I mean, this is a little bit debated because we've gotten weird responses where it seems to know more than that, but that's what they say. They talk more about risks and mitigations. And what's interesting here is that they explain that as these models are getting better, as they're able to you know, understand more and more concepts, it takes more and more experts to give, that mo give the models feedback and tell it when it's wrong. You can imagine there's a lot of areas, you know, take medicine, for example, that it could confidently give you an answer, but just as a layman, if you're just a researcher at OpenAI or, or a coder or something, you're not really going to know if that's true or not. So they're bringing in lots of experts from many different fields to evaluate whether these answers are factually accurate. It shows some examples of, you know, problematic prompts and the early GPT-4 versus final GPT-4 after, you know, tweaking and um, some bits of like human supervised learning on these. You can read the answers here. They do acknowledge that there are still jailbreaks to generate content, which violates the guidelines, but I expect um, that number of jailbreaks will go down as they keep learning. They talk about predictability um, of uh, accuracy of the model because basically these things take a very long time to train. So you can't just train it and then evaluate it and train it all over and over and over again. You need some form of predictability to know if the data you're putting in is going to result in you know better results. And through some magic, they were able to increase the predictability of this. So to me, my reading of this is that they're going to be able to iterate even faster because they can, again, predict how much this new data or new uh, supervised learning from human supervised learning is going to uh, increase the accuracy of the results. So who knows, maybe GPT 4.5 comes out tomorrow. We'll see. They are open sourcing something called OpenAI evals, which is a software framework for benchmarking GPT-4. So presumably more benchmarks will come out. We'll have better tests. They'll be able to uh, train against those and continue to improve it. ChatGPT plus users already have access to GPT-4 with a usage cap. Currently, the cap is 100 messages every four hours. Again, this is going to blow up their servers, um, so we'll see if they survive the coming days, but I'm fully expecting this to be down for periods of time, especially for free users. The API is currently out. I, I believe a lot of companies had like a preview to GPT-4, some of their partner companies, um, but now it is available to everyone, and they describe the pricing here. And then finally, their you know conclusion, there's an appendix, and then again, there's this massive research paper if any of you feel like reading that. But I am going to be diving deep on GPT-4, so subscribe below. There's going to be many more videos out, and I will see you in the next one.